Hey guys, so today we're going to be discussing self-esteem. A little while ago I posted a video called My Self-Esteem Issues. It was very much a raw video filmed in my car and just on a rainy day I think and today it's kind of a gloomy day too so you know I'm just doing a part two to that video. I wanted to kind of give you guys an update and also share, well the update is I'm better now and uh, I wanted to share my best advice for you guys and I kind of want you to see Hopefully there's advice in this video that you haven't heard before, it's really all just a personal journey, but hopefully this video can kind of bring some perspective into your life that maybe, you know, some things that you haven't thought about before in regards to yourself and your purpose and your being in this world. Now, of course, these are the things that help me out in dealing with self-esteem and the things I usually go to and think of when I'm feeling those low moments because they do still happen. I'm still in the process of this journey. I think as you get older, you gain more perspective about what's really important. And, you know, it was way more about physical appearance in my early 20s. And now it's just, am I a good human? Am I proud of what I've done with my life? Am I like where I want to be? What are my accomplishments? Things like that. But that can be just as stressful, by the way, and just as like nerve wracking. I actually had a conversation about this with with Carrie Dayton, she posted an Insta story regarding like feeling like everybody hates you and that's definitely something that I still struggle with. Um, thinking, am I a good enough person? Am I a good enough friend? Am I a good enough girlfriend and daughter and things? And like, am I really a good person? And just kind of feeling self-conscious in the fact of, you know, do people really like me? And then, you know, back to the physical appearance kind of thing because that, you know, has gotten better over the years. But it was a journey, you know, to go from, you know, accepting that this is how I look, like this is just what I am given, the, uh, the body and the face that I have been given. Going from, you know, acceptance to not caring about how I look to finally loving how I look. And, you know, that has been a whole journey. And of course, we're back to no makeup. As you guys know, if you've been a viewer for a long time, I used to do No Makeup Mondays. I think I did that for two years consistently. Every Monday, I would film without makeup on because I wanted to project into the world that it's okay to love yourself exactly how you are, how you were born. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially in this you know social media culture of facetune and filler and botox and things when you're 20 years old which i could rant about that but i'm not going to because you know it's everyone's personal decision and life journey so it does not matter my opinion does not matter um i personally wouldn't do that but i just would prefer to accept how i look how I be right now. <laughs> anyway, but I'm finally at peace with, mostly at peace with myself. Like I said, it fluctuates based on the day, um, but I'm finally at peace with my health, my strength, um, my physical appearance, and just me. I wanna say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring yet another video of mine. It really is amazing when I get to work with companies that I genuinely use and love and spend my own money on. That's typically how I accept sponsorships is if I have spent my own money or if I would spend my own money, and usually I do spend my own money on the sponsors that I take by the way um, I do maintain my Skillshare skill Skillshare membership to this day and use it so Skillshare is an online community with over 25,000 different classes on varying topics like literally anything you can think of including self-esteem which is very relevant to this video so I recommend checking out the class called new confidence that's one that I recently discovered and check it out after this video if you need a little bit more inspiration you can find classes to inspire your creativity curiosity and your career on Skillshare and of course they're hooking it up with a deal for my viewers the first 500 people to click on the link in my description box get two whole months free a free trial on Skillshare which that is a lot of class content that you can consume and then after that it starts at just about ten dollars a month so I highly recommend checking it out there's tons of different topics on there from you know hobbies some arts and crafts to self-development and working on yourself and your self-esteem so the first thing that I kind of have embraced this year was one of my resolutions I don't know if you guys remember but to just be honest about my feelings, my emotions, my thoughts, within reason of course when it's appropriate, and basically just be myself. I feel like I feel the best when I'm not trying to be anybody else, when I'm not trying to put on a certain face for certain people or situations. And when I'm just my honest and genuine self, then I feel the best because then I know if people don't like me, 
that's okay because that, that's what you get. For, that's what all you're getting from me is me. So if you don't like that, then that's okay. We can part ways and move on. I know there's like some debate whether or not you should love your flaws or not. And I'm not really at the point where I'm like, oh, I love my double chin, you know, or my imperfect smile, the fact I'm missing some teeth, you know, especially with everyone getting veneers. Of course, I'm like a little bit envious of their perfect teeth because I don't have that, I can't afford that, and I don't want that. But I feel like that's kind of the standard, and so I'm just automatically less because I don't want to do that to myself, and that is not a healthy mindset at all. So instead, I like to look in the mirror and be like, I'm me. Like, how cool is it that no one else exists that has this makeup and that has what's going on here and that I'm just myself, and I think that's kind of cool. I mean, if you think about it, the odds of you existing or me existing at all is basically zero. And there will never be anyone else born with the same genetic makeup or physical makeup or mental makeup that you have currently. There will never be anyone else like you. So I've basically turned my self-esteem issues into curiosity about my own body and how it functions and what it does, because it's super fascinating, like just on a scientific level, which we are gonna get a little sciency in this video because that's something that comforts me. So this video is gonna get a little weird. I'm just warning you now. But you know, I've taken that and turned it into curiosity and basically just complete gratitude for this experience on earth and this experience to feel what it feels like to be a human at all. Like, I feel so lucky that I get the opportunity to be here and to like live on this planet, which, you know, in itself is weird that it even exists. I've been really into space lately, okay? Space has been something that's been very comforting to me. I've always been interested in astronomy and things like that. And I know, like I said, it's getting weird. Or is it too weird <laughs> for some reason? The insignificance of the concept of us in space, like even just the earth, like the earth is humongous to us. It is nothing in the universe. And I feel like that is such a comforting thought to me that we're so insignificant. And the fact that there's like billions of people, we really aren't that important. And I know that's, that can either cause like an existential crisis or it could be really comforting. So hopefully this is comforting to you that your problems don't really matter. I don't wanna discredit your problems though. I'm not talking about the serious issues and the horrific and horrible things that happen on this earth. We do not need to brush those aside as if they don't exist. But day-to-day -day issues, worries, anxieties that we deal with are typically not worth our energy and that energy that we expel into these worries and that stress that we cause will ultimately kill us. Like stress is considered the black plague of the century, so we all just need to calm down. But if you just think about the odds of the earth existing in the galaxy, the galaxy existing in the universe, we exist on the earth and then you exist out of all the chances of other people being created, like the odds, so as I've gotten older, I've realized that the little things that I used to care so much about, like early 20s thigh gap situation, like I, <laughs> the fact that I like tortured my body to, because I wanted a certain thing, it was so, it's asinine to me now in my late 20s. I thought these were like the biggest issues and now with hindsight, uh, not so big. What's really important to me is I've kind of transitioned the, you know, self-consciousness of the external appearance of my body, which really doesn't matter in the long run, um, to caring more about the function of my body. You know, can it take me places? Can it digest my food? Can it protect me from diseases? As I get older, that's what I care more about. That's what I want my body to do for me, and I need to care for it in a way that it knows that that's what I want from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, love my body with the food and exercise because I want it to do those things for me. And if you starve your body or, you know, beat it up and torture it, it's not going to do those things. But that's why we have our body and why it works the way it does. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about imposter syndrome, which I have been experiencing quite a lot lately. And it's, that's really what I've been struggling more about. Like I said, it's what I care more about now is the internal, aspect and my job and like am I good at this or am I decent do I 
do I deserve the things that I have kind of thing, you know? And we know that comparison is the thief of joy, but we all compare. And I really do feel like in 20, 40 years, we're gonna see some scientific data that supports the fact that social media is causing all this anxiety, especially in young people, because they don't have that perspective yet to know what's really important and that just because you don't look like someone on social media, that doesn't make you ugly or make you bad. Different does not mean inherently bad. I know we're always told to celebrate our differences and our uniqueness and things like that, but I've never really understood that until my age now, until like this year, where I'm like, you know what, it's cool that I exist like this, that my DNA was created to be like this. Like, what are the odds that I would get this genetic makeup? So I just, you know, come to appreciate what I have instead of thinking I need to have what other people have or get this plastic surgery, which again, not dogging on plastic surgery because you can do whatever you want to yourself. But I think we should still appreciate our bodies and love them for what they do for us and what they are. I, as a YouTuber, I, what, okay, I'll talk about the imposter syndrome a little bit. So as a YouTuber, I kind of compare myself to other YouTubers and that is a slippery slope because I have never thought that I was good enough for the amount of subscribers that I have. And then I see people with less subscribers than me and they're just way better at their job than I am. And I'm like, how, how, why do I deserve that? And they don't. Like, why don't they, we should like switch subscriber count, you know? And I always have thought that. But me thinking that, oh, they're better at that, that's not necessarily accurate. They're just, we have different styles. Like, just because I wish I could be like them doesn't mean I can go and copy them because that I shouldn't. <laughs> just because we have different vibes in the video doesn't mean that one is better than the other. We have different styles and different opinions and that's okay. You know, we constantly are seeing the standards of everything change, not just standards of beauty, um, but standards of everything, of content, of, you know, everything. And they're constantly changing and we always feel like we're not <laughs> changing and we don't really fit in any of these beauty molds that are crafted on social media, but that's okay. It's okay to not fit into any of these trends or standards or an anything. So today is actually my 30 day meditation in a row. I've done it for 30 days straight now. My previous streak was 12 days. So I'm really picking up the pace. I've been meditating for probably three years now at this point, on and off, obviously not every day. 30 days is the longest I've gone every day. And something that I've really learned in the meditative journey, sorry, I'm still getting over being sick, so my voice goes out really easily because I'm talking so much. But one of the th biggest things that I've learned in meditation is to be my own best friend and to treat myself with love and compassion and to be there for myself because no one else is really guaranteed. That sounds really sad and negative, but as you get to adulthood and, you know, as you grow, you need someone to be there for you. So why not be that person for yourself? You know, as children, we're nurtured by our parents and family members and things. But as we grow, we don't need that nurturing anymore. But I still think that we need some kind of nurturing. And so it's important to be there for yourself and to treat yourself with compassion and not beat yourself up because there are gonna be people in the world that will do that for you. So focus on your good qualities, your strengths, your talents and things that make you different from the world, even if it's just your existence, because that alone in itself is a miracle. So I think the reason why the type of self-esteem that I get wrapped up in now, which is, am I a good person? How do people view me? Especially the people I care about, you know, and in the YouTube culture, the comments that really bother me are the ones about me and my, humanness and my personal traits and personality and things like that. Uh, those are the ones that affect me. Physical comments and appearance ones can go by the wayside. I've done so many videos without makeup on by this point. I don't care if people don't like how I look without makeup because that genuinely does not affect them. My physical appearance has nothing, has no effect on anyone else, right? But who I am as a person and what thoughts and ideas I project out into the world and also how I treat the people that I love, that affects people. And I think that's why I'm so self-conscious about whether or not I am good enough for the people in my life. And the comments on YouTube definitely have given me a different perspective about how I present myself to people. I mean, the whole YouTube process, <sighs> doing it over the last nine years has been 
such a journey of self-discovery. You know, I've basically spent all my 20s on YouTube and that's a very definitive time in life, that decade. And I feel like I've really grown and learned and it's really helped me appreciate how I come off to other people because although the criticism is harsh, especially in the beginning when I wasn't really self-aware, now I understand how I come across to some people and I try to do better, not only on YouTube, but in my personal relationships. Now, I'm not religious in any way. I am, in fact, an atheist, but there is something about um, the Buddhist take on poor self-esteem that I thought I would share that really resonates with me. It says, this agitation is vain. It does not change the past. It does not change the future, but only makes the present miserable, which is so true. When we're thinking so negatively about ourselves, we're really, really hyper-focused on ourselves and our physical appearance and our imperfections and everything about us. But is it really always about us? No. You know, I think the key to self-esteem is to recognize that the world is not always about you. It does not revolve around you. And that's a really humbling, comforting feeling because the world's eyes are not on you. Like people gener generally, I say genuinely and generally, both work, don't care about you. And to me, that's comforting because we are just small, insignificant animals on this earth. And when it comes to what other people think about us, generally, of course, I still deal with this. And we should care to an extent, especially the people that love us, we should care about what they think to an extent. <laughs> How many times can I say that? But generally, people aren't looking at you. They don't care. They scroll right by. They just don't care. And that is gives you so much freedom to do whatever the heck you want to do. You know, embrace this only opportunity that you will ever have on this earth. You will never get a second chance at a life like this. Like it's never gonna happen. The odds that we are even here are zero. So embrace this opportunity and realize that there's so much more in life or more to life than looking beautiful or looking as perfect as the girls on social media or with perfect outfits, perfect bone structure with fillers and things like that and facetune and all of that like that to me is just those things just don't matter and if they want to do that cool doesn't affect me right i mean it does affect people in general because it makes people think that they need to do that because everyone's doing it so might as well hop on the bandwagon right well wrong because i think we should just embrace our own life and do what we want to do and embrace our uniqueness and differences because we'll never be like this again. We'll never get this opportunity again. And I 100% credit my renewed self-esteem to space. <laughs> I sound weird right now. Space and meditation. Those two things have really helped me out in realizing what's important and how insignificant we really are, how insignificant I really am, and that there are just bigger things to worry about. So don't put on an act for anybody. Being your genuine, true, humble self is going to attract the right people. And if people come in and they don't like it, they will leave and that's okay. You know how many billions of people are on this earth? It, we don't need everyone to like us. So I know this video is kind of a strange perspective on self-esteem. I really do hope that it helps some of you because for me, these are the things that really help. For some reason, just the tips that we hear all the time about self-esteem just weren't doing it for me. So it really took a different perspective to come to terms with that and to just embrace who I am and to just love who I am because why not? If you have any tips on self-esteem or any advice yourself, please leave it down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoy and I will talk to you soon. Bye.